We need to go to the book of Revelation. You know why it's called Revelation? Because it's a revelation. Oh, glory. Revelation chapter 1. Before we get started, I want you to understand something because we're going somewhere and only God knows. The book of Revelation was written from another plane of reality. Catch this. The book of Revelation was written from another plane of reality. It was not written from a this plane of reality. It was written from another plane of reality. There are realms and planes of reality, and these are certain levels of reality. Did you ever tell somebody, get real? What you're actually telling them is, why don't you see what I see? Because they live from another plane of reality. See, people live from other, another plane of reality. That's why Jesus was always looking for someone that's like-minded with him so that they can live and walk with him in the same plane of reality. When you and I get baptized in the Holy Spirit, immediately it should, should put us into another plane of reality so that we see what the Father sees. We think the same way. We no longer live for ourselves. We hate pride. We hate lust. We hate sin. And we don't want to associate anyone who does it. And those that associate and do it live from a different plane of reality that you and I do. In Revelation chapter 1, in verse 9, let's, uh, verse 10, I'm sorry. Let's speak it together. I was in the what? Spirit, spirit on the Lord's day. Two things occur and here, happen here. In the spirit on the Lord's day. On the Lord's day. In other words, it is an appointed feast day. Feast is associated with appointments. Appointments from God. Visitations, some sort of an appointment. God tries to bring us appointments to visit us. And it says, I was in the spirit. In other words, I was in another plane of reality. And I heard behind me a loud voice as of a trumpet saying, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. And what you see, write in a book and send it to the seven churches which, is, which are in Asia, to Ephesus, to Samaria, to Pergamos, to Thyatira, to Sardius, to Philadelphia, and to Laodicea. Then I turned to see the voice that spoke with me. And having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And in the midst of the seven lampstands, one like the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the feet and girded about the chest with a golden band. His head and hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes like a flame of fire. His feet were like fine brass, as if refined in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. He had in his right hand seven stars out of his mouth when a sharp two-edged sword and his countenance was like the sun shining in its strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. But he laid his ha right hand on me, saying to me, Do not be afraid, I am the first and the last. I am he who, wa who lives and who was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. 
Amen. And I have the keys of Hades, hell, and death. Write the things which you have seen and the things which are and the things which will take place after this. The mystery of the seven stars which you saw in my right hand and the seven golden lampstands, the seven stars of the angels of the seven churches, and the seven lampstands which you saw are the seven churches. Powerful. Powerful. John was brought to another reality. If you see something here very powerful, he says, write the things which you have seen and the things which are and the things which will take place. In other words, in this plane of reality, God was going to bring them in the past, in the future, and then bring them back to the present. So he could correlate all things and write. See, in another plane of reality, which you are brought in, and many times you don't even recognize them. When you dream, you're brought into another plane of reality. When you are filled, when we come in presence of God, we are brought into another plane of reality. When Jesus set the tabernacle up, he set it up for three chambers. Each chamber is a different plane of reality. That's why those who live in the outer court don't see what you see. Those who only live in the holy place don't see what you see. Because there's a different sight and a different understanding of those who live in the most holy place than those who live in just the holy place and the outer court. And then, of course, you got outer darkness who don't see stinking nothing but themselves. They can't see beyond themselves. Is everybody okay? God is requiring us to come deeper so that we can see. When he calls prophets, prophets are individuals. You can't just call yourself a prophet just because you can prophesy. Or all prophets then, because it's a gift. Anyone can prophesy. But there is a prophet office where God comes and takes the individuals and brings them to another plane of reality. Does everybody understand that? I hear a lot of people call them prophets, call themselves prophets just because they prophesy. I've been called a prophet because I prophesy. I'm not an office of a prophet. Everybody got it? Not that I can't prophesy because it's a gift of the Spirit. But God does allow me to tap into another plane of reality where there is a prophetic move and prophetic messages that come to release. What you're hearing tonight is a prophetic message. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Oh, hallelujah. In verse 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 7. Hmm. Is everybody there? Yeah. Planes and realms of reality. I guess we could use that as a title. <laughs> Glory to God. Verse 7, let's speak it. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. <laughs> we have this treasure in earthen vessels. We have this treasure something that's connected to another plane of reality in earthen vessels. That the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. We are hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not despair. Per persecuted, but what? Not forsaken. Struck down, and, but not destroyed. 
always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal body, in our mortal flesh. So then death is working in us and life in you. And since we have the same spirit of what? Faith. Same spirit of faith. Spirit of faith. Spirit of faith. See, the spirit of faith, he's called a spirit of faith. This spirit of faith, which dwells in me and you, is the treasure that connects me and you to multiple planes of reality. That's why we live by faith, not by sight. Because when, when you are connected with the realm of reality God places you in, you see things differently. And since we have the same spirit of faith according to what is written, I believe, and therefore I what? Spoke. We also believe and therefore speak, knowing that we, he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us with you. For all things are for your sakes. That grace, the plan having spread through the many, may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. Therefore, we don't lose what? We don't lose what? How? We don't give up. We don't quit. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us. Ah. <laughs> uh. You need to grab hold of that one. For our light of... I haven't had a light affliction in years. Everything is crazy. I have the heaviest afflictions. No, they're light. Or you wouldn't be here. <laughs> Heavy afflictions kill you. <laughs> Therefore, we don't lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day for our light affliction, which is but for a morning, is working for us. Everyone say, working for us. Everyone say, I love to suffer. <laughs> Remember the word says, you must suffer to be what? Perfected? Established, right? Yeah. And settled. So you must love to suffer. Not according to sin. The purpose of suffering is to deny yourself and come to the end of you so that you and I are no longer living for me or, or the world or the things of the world. We're living for him. Amen. There's a lot of people who are going to do a lot of suffering until they finally come to the end of themselves. Hallelujah. For our light affliction, which is about for a moment, is working for us far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are what? Seen, but the things which are what? Now, how are you going to look at something not seen? You must enter another plane of reality. Somebody get this. If you're looking for the things that you don't see, you're living out of another plane of reality. That's why people think you're nuts or peculiar or weird. What's that funny language? Why is he always looking up? <laughs> Who's he talking to? He's talking to himself. He must be weird. <laughs> Hallelujah. Man, look at over there. He's got a conversation with nobody. It's because he lives in another reality. He ain't crazy. Can't say that for all of them, but anyways. <laughs> for the things which are seen are what? Temporary, but the things which are not seen are what? Eternal. Wow. <laughs> Paul speaks about 
other levels of realms and planes of reality. This treasure <laughs> within me and you is a representation of connection to another plane of reality. Not only access, but we live and we see other realms of reality, living through them. That's what walking in the spirit is. It's living in another plane of reality. So that this reality, you know, is only temporary. That's why he said, as a soldier of Christ, a Christ soldier lives out of another plane of reality. He says, do not entangle yourself with the affairs of this world. Why? Because they'll pull you out of that plane of reality and you will be blinded to those planes which God has predestined for each and every one of us. Joel chapter 2. Oh, happy days. Joel chapter 2, in verse 28. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. And it shall come to pass afterward, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And your sons and your daughters will what? Prophesy. Prophesy. A lot of people try to prophesy out of the soul. They prophesy out of what they feel. Prophecy has nothing to do with feelings. Prophesy is seeing from another plane of reality and speaking what you see. Your old men shall dream dreams. Dreams bring are from another plane of reality. Sometimes God can't, he's trying to speak to someone and he, they, he can't get to them until they finally sleep or become unconscious. Old men shall dream dream, dreams and, and young men shall what? See visions. Prophecy, dreams, and visions are all from another plane of reality. And also on my men servants and maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth. Blood and fire and pillars of smoke. You know, many people don't even see what the heck's going on. Because they're still, they haven't reached that plane of reality. They're too caught up in themselves. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. Do you know that just before Jesus comes, you will know it. You will know it. In fact, you will be running around going, he's coming. He's coming. You don't know exactly the day or that moment, but I'm telling you, you will know that he's coming and you will go around and tell everyone he's coming, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming. Why? Because he's coming any moment then. Everyone through the whole world will begin to say he's coming, he's coming, he's coming. And then he will come. And he'll come and take his church. Whoa, yes. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there shall be deliverance, as the Lord has said, among the remnant whom the Lord calls. Again, God is revealing levels of realms and planes of reality. Each plane has its reality with own purpose, message, and truth. It is to bring in a full-blown destiny in Christ Jesus for me and you and sometimes for others. Prophecy, dreams, visions. These are planes of reality that support the existing 
realm of God. And also will support our destiny. In Acts chapter 9. Hallelujah. In verse 1, in Saul still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked letters from him to the synagogues of Damascus so that if he found any who were of the way or followers of Jesus, whether men, women, or children, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem so that they would be murdered. Paul was living in another realm. He was Saul then, living in another realm of reality. He, see, what the enemy loves to do is put people in the deception state of being so they live in another realm of reality. Evil and wickedness is another realm of reality to them. They live in another plane. There's a difference with those who live in righteousness. It's another plane of reality. Saul thought he was doing things for God. Even the word says... In the last days, many will kill thinking they're doing it for God. Because they've been deceived and taken out the true plane of reality into a false plane of reality. <laughs> and Saul at this time actually believed he was doing the right thing, but he was deceived. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven. Then he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, who are you, Lord? Paul got quick revelation. I mean, all revelation. You get revelation from another plane of reality. You get illumination from the word. But you get revelation from another plane of reality. In other words, it could be a message from another plane of reality that is being released to you, and it becomes revelation. Saul definitely got a revelation here. Because he said, when, when he asked, who are you? He said, okay. And when Jesus said, I am Saul, Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he said, it's hard for you to kick against the goads. And of course he says, what do you want me to do? Amen? He got reality that this was God. So he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Then the Lord said to him, arise and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. Saul was communicating or communi was in communication from another plane or another realm of, re of existence. See, these are called, it's a plane of reality and a realm of existence. It is a plane of reality and a realm of existence. Because in these planes of reality, there is a realm of existence. And Saul was in communication from another plane and a realm of existence. Or another plane of reality in a realm of existence. He heard a voice. He saw a light. He was blinded, pushed off his horse, surrendered to the will of God. In John chapter 1. When the Holy Spirit released this to me, I didn't really understand the whole reality of it yet. 
But as I began to speak tonight, he just spoke to me and he said, this is to assist our identity. He still says, my people don't know who they really are. And the enemy has them in captivity in his plane of reality and not the one God has for me and you. Because they still live for themselves, but yet call themselves believers. John chapter 1 and verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. And him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shines in darkness. And the darkness did not comprehend it. Why? Because darkness cannot comprehend light because it lives in another realm or plane of reality. And where that realm is, there's another existence. So you got a plane of reality and a realm of existence. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. John was sent from God. He came in the spirit of Elijah because he immediately was living in another plane of reality. And he was living in the, his own realm of re existence from that plane of reality because there wasn't too many people around him that were except for some of the prophets that were left at that time. Hallelujah. <laughs> In verse 7, this man came for a witness to bear the witness of the light that all through him might believe. He was not the light, but was sent to bear witness of the light that was the true light, which gives light to every man coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. Why? Because even his own were not living on the same plane of reality, and they couldn't recognize it. That's why people can't recognize. Remember, they even talked when Jesus, they said, isn't he Joseph's son? Isn't he just Mary's son? Isn't he just a carpenter? Why? Because they weren't living in the same realm of reality. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name. In other words, he gave them a right to access another plane of reality and a realm of existence. He says, who were born not of blood, not of the will of flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. Do you understand that you were born again? to live from another plane of reality. That's what born again is. If you truly are born again, you're no longer dependent on this plane of reality. You are dependent on the plane of reality where God dwells. And that is a whole other realm of existence. That's why you associate with those that are like-minded. They're like-minded because they live in the same plane of reality you do. Is everybody okay? Who were born not of blood, nor the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh. Now when you think about that, you know that the Creator who created His own realm of reality... <laughs> I mean, on plane of reality and realm of existence that is multiple billions of light years away from here. But to him, there is no distance or time. He can be everywhere at one time. Past, present, future. And everywhere. He decided to come into this plane of reality even though it's a temporary plane. 
so that he might connect individuals back to the reality where they came from. Is everybody okay? That's why it says the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory the only as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Wow. Hallelujah. <laughs> John 3. John chapter 3. Oh, happy days. In verse 1, oh goodness. There was a man, a Pharisee, named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are from another realm of reality. <laughs> You're another, from another plane of reality. <laughs> Why? He says, we know you're from God. See, when somebody knows that you are from God, the, this realm, uh, this plane of reality here in this realm of existence calls people who are connected to another plane of reality of God, they call us religious or spiritual because they can only communicate according to this plane of reality because they don't know the other language. Is everybody okay? Oh, you must be one of those religious, born again, whatever it is. I'm spiritual too. See all these crystals in my hands? I even have a demon catcher in my car. What do they call those things? Wind catchers or dream catchers? Man, I see them in the car. Some of them, are, they're so big, people can't even see out their front windshield. <laughs> when I roll my window down, you know, get rid of that cursed item. Hallelujah. John 3, verse 1. And anyways, Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews, this man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. <laughs> now the kingdom of God is another plane of reality. And it is another realm of existence. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Oh, be real. Get real. Now, now grab hold of this. It's because, I mean, he had the, all the information that he's been a Pharisee for such a long time. He had all the scrolls and the scriptures that promoted what was getting ready to happen, even the coming of the Lord. But because he was not connected to the plane of reality with God, he couldn't understand. How can a man, what do you mean? Are you going to shrink me? Am I going to go back to being a baby again? Jesus, I'm, I, I'm surprised Jesus didn't laugh. But anyways. And Jesus said to him, Verse 5, most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of the water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I say to you, must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from or where it goes. So everyone who is born of the Spirit. Wow. <laughs> Nicodemus answered and said to him, How can these things be? <laughs> and Jesus said to him, Are you a teacher of Israel and do not know these things? 
Now, so surely I say to you, we speak what we know and testify what we have seen, and you do not receive our witness. If I told you earthly things and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? <laughs> no one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven, that is the Son of Man who is in heaven. Do you understand that heaven is another plane of reality? So is hell. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, and whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe in him is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light lest his deeds be exposed. Why? Because they live from another plane of reality. But he who does the truth comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen and that they may be done in God. Wow. Wow. Being born again brings us into another plane of reality and realm of existence where the human nature of yourself <laughs> in, this, in that realm of existence is no longer dominant. The divine nature is dominant. Does everybody understand that? Now, these realms cannot mix. These realms cannot mix. They are separated. They are divided. So the old man, it's of the old, the current realm, amen, the current plane, the realm of existence in the plane, has its own language and understanding. That's why the word tells us that the carnal mind cannot comprehend the things of God. In fact, it's against everything of God. Because it lives in its own plane of reality and realm of existence. So immediately when someone is really born again or filled with the Spirit, there is a battle. There's a storm of reality within him. It is a storm of reality in that person. That battle of first place for true reality. There's the battle of the, real, uh, the plane of reality from God and the battle of the plane of reality from the devil. They are fighting over reality. So if you feel like you're getting beat up like this, once in a you got to take dominion. Amen. But if you're truly living from the plane of reality of God, there is dominion over that one. Amen. You have the dominion. Unless the enemy can slip you up, trap you, deceive you, and begin to pull you out of that. See, people can talk about that realm and that plane, but are not living in it. Because they used to live in it, so the only thing that they're talking about is the memory of it. Come on, are you with me? How many, yeah, man, I know, yeah, I know, I know all that, but the person's fruits stink. Because they're no longer living that plane of reality and that realm of existence. Though that they used to, but they've been taken out of it, now they're living in a temporary plane of reality. But they can sure talk a good talk, even quote scripture. The devil does that too. 
Being born again brings us into another plane of reality, a plane of, uh, yeah, reality and realm of existence where your human nature and your new divine nature are at battle. Amen? Again, they do not mix. They clash against each other. And the storm of realities <laughs> is on. And the battle is for belief and doubt. Belief and doubt. That battle. Belief and doubt. Belief and doubt. That constant battle of believing God or doubting God. Only one has the future. The other will die. That's why the word warns us, those who live according to the flesh will die. Those who live according to the spirit because they are living from another plane of reality will live. 2 Corinthians 5. Oh boy. Second Corinthians five. In verse one. Is everybody okay? That's why people don't see what you see. And they just don't understand why they don't see what you see. Verse 1, for we know that if our earthly house, this tent, is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal where? In the heavens, where there is another realm of existence on another plane of reality. For in this we what? Groan earnestly, desire to be clothed with our habitation, which is from heaven. If indeed having been clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we who are in this tent grown, being burdened, not because we want to be unclothed, but further clothed, that mortality may be swallowed up by life. Now he who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who also has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. So we are always confident, knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by what? Faith. Faith. Not by sight. We are confident, yes, well pleased, rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Therefore, we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be what? Well pleasing. For we must all, I'm going to say that again, we must all, no matter what plane you're living from, whether it's jet blue or, you know, no matter what plane you're living out of, we must all appear before the judgment seat of God that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether what? Good or bad. You know, when God created Adam and Eve, he created them out of another plane of reality. And he placed them into another plane of reality. Amen? Does everybody understand that? That's why he put a garden and he placed them. He was protecting them. He walked with them face to face. You got to understand something. Adam and Eve didn't know anything else. They knew the one that created them and they used to talk to him every day. Face to face. That whole plane of reality and realm of existence was in the garden, which was stolen. But God gave them a free will to desire that plane of reality and live there in that realm of existence. But they bit the bait of Satan and it removed them out. And they got a whole nother plane of reality and no, and no other realm of existence. 
Man, you're gonna be sweating, you're gonna have to work, you're gonna die. Gee. You're gonna have to deal with demons and everything now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want to be more clothed from another plane of reality. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life of another plane or another realm of existence and plane of reality who came to bring us. That's what the tabernacle is about. That's why he called it eternal port. In its three chambers, Psalm 118. Psalm 118. Hallelujah. You know, it's, I mean, when you, when you think about it, most, and I'm, not, I'm just saying, most people believe in God. Even atheists, when they get in trouble, they go, oh, God, you know, <laughs> because it's, it's, it's there, it's, it's in you. The light of life is from God. But e even though in that arena, we come to a place to where sometimes we don't really seek that other plane of reality until something di disastrous comes our way. There, there's an instinct within us that says, this plane of reality can't help me. <laughs> I'm in trouble in this plane, but I need another plane of reality to help me. <laughs> it's called divine intervention from God. So people begin to see God in their troubles until God reveals to them his plane of reality and realm of existence and then they begin to serve God. Oh, hallelujah. Psalm 118, verse 15. Is everybody there? The voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tents of the righteous. Does everybody see that? The voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the temple of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but what? Live. And declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has chastened me severely, but he has not given me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness, and I will go through them. I will praise the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous shall enter. I will praise you. For you have answered me and have become my salvation. The voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the temples, the tents. We are the temple of God. Why? That voice of joy and, re and salvation is because we are connected from the plane of reality where God is at. In John chapter 8. People that are miserable are not living from the right plane. They caught the wrong plane and bought the wrong ticket. <laughs> they made the wrong reservation, man. <laughs> Verse 42, Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God, nor have I come of myself, nor have I come of myself, nor have I come of myself. See, because he's from another plane of reality, self is not involved there. Oh, yes. 
nor have I come of myself, but he who sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. You are of your father the devil. Oh, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. But because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Which of you convicts me of sin? And if I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? He who hear, who is of God hears God's words. Therefore you do not hear because you, do, you are not of God. In other words, when he says you are not of God, it's because you're not, he's, you're not living on the plane of it, that plane of reality. Again, we are, live in another plane of reality. We are no longer human. We don't live from the human plane of reality. We live from the born-again state of being. We are eternal lights, not temporaries. Amen? Voice, language, relationship, understanding, and wisdom from the eternal realm of reality and existence. It's all different. In Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. <laughs> Verse 16. What plane are you flying? And I say, walk in the spirit. Verse 16. And you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another. So you do not do the things that you wish or desire. But if you are led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are what? Evident which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions and heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Again, these realms do not mix. You can't live according to this plane of reality and realm of existence and expect to get into the eternal one. You must be living according to the kingdom of God, eternal plane of reality and that realm of existence to enter it because you're already there. That's all you're going to do is just walk through the door, but you already have a position there. That's why you are blessed with every spiritual blessing and seated in heavenly places. That's seated in heavenly places. It's another plane of reality. Is everybody okay? But the enemy, amen, had battle between those planes of reality he just spoke on. It's all about self, isn't it? Drunkenness, drugs, all of these things, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, fornication, serving lust, lust. Lust is another, is, is the temporary plan, plane of reality. And it will prevent individuals, it will destroy them. Everybody okay? It says here, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit, and let us not become conceited, provoking one another, or envying one another. Walk in the eternal plane of reality in the realm of existence only in Christ, while the enemy of this realm of existence, which is against the eternal, imprisons individuals with false reality, influence, 
of fame, fortune, attacking all levels of reality with lust that promotes sin, sickness, blindness, and death. 1 Corinthians 14. First Corinthians fourteen. Verse one. Let's speak the first five verses, okay? Pursue what? Love. Now he's not this love is not lust. This is love from above. It's totally different. Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may what? Prophesy. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to who? To God. For no one understands him. However, he's, in the spirit he speaks mysteries. But he who prophesies speaks edification and exhort exhortation and comfort to men. But he who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. But he who prophesies edifies the church. I wish you all spoke with tongues, but even more that you'd prophesy, for he who prophesies is greater than he who speaks with tongues, unless indeed he interprets that the church may receive edification. Let me share with you, most prophecy is interpretation of tongues. Spiritual gifts, these are of the Holy Spirit now. Amen? These are tools from another plane of reality and realm of existence. To be used in the realm of death, because this realm is death. To bring light, life, and truth in a way of escape to people who are imprisoned here. Just like me and you were imprisoned here once. But we are no longer prisons, prisoners of this realm. Amen? Or this plane. We're not prisoners here. We may live here. But we're, we're, our, our existence is no longer from here. Our existence is from another realm of reality. Do it okay? Yeah. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 13, in verse 4. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself, is not puffed up. This is love from above. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. Is not provoked. Thinks no evil. Hmm. Does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. This love never fails, but whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away, of course, when Jesus comes. For we know in part and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away with. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away foolish things. And childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I also am known. And now abide with what? Faith, hope, love. These things, and, but the greatest of these is what? Love. Love from above. You know, when we were toddlers, we lived a different plane of reality. When we were adolescents, we lived a different plane of reality. When we were adults, we live a different plane of reality. In, all, in other words, our existence is totally different. We, see, we saw things different. We could only comprehend so many things. Each one was a plane of reality. We had a reality. And that reality and realm of existence 
was an area of desire and want, an area of need, all of those places, and dependent on others. But in a realm of uh, the plane of reality of God and the realm of existence of God, we are dependent on him, no longer man. It's different. That's why we trust him. If there's truly a relationship, there's a true trust. You know, there are people who say that they trust him and don't even know him. And that trust can only go so far to where they break down. And the book of Jude, and then one more scripture. Remember, prophets wrote of the past events, future events, and present day events because they were getting information and living out of another plane of reality. The book of Jude, verse 14. Now Enoch the seventh from Adam prophesied about these men, also saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment on all. Is he coming from another plane of reality? Yes to execute judgment on all, to convict all who are ungodly among them of their ungodly deeds which they had committed in an ungodly way, and of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are grumblers and complainers walking according to their own lusts, and they mouth great swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. But you, beloved, remember the words which were spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how they told you that there would be mockers in the last time. Are we in the last time? Yes. Who would walk according to their own ungodly lust. Remember, lust. Lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, pride of life. All of those areas are destroyers and removers of individuals from the plan, uh, plane of reality where God is at. He said, these are sensual persons who cause divisions, not having the spirit. In other words, by, by the word saying, not having the spirit saying, they're not living from the plane of reality where God is at, or where the spirit's bringing, uh, living at. You, these are sensual persons who cause the visions not having the spirit. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith. Faith connects, doesn't it? Praying what? In the Holy Ghost. You know, people don't realize the importance of praying in tongues. They just don't get it. If people would pray in tongues more, they'd be living from the plane of reality and the realm of existence where God is at. But you, beloved, building yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in tongues, keeping yourselves in the love of God, not the lust of the world, not the pride of life, not the lust of the eye. Looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto what? Eternal life. And on some have compassion, making a distinction, but on others, smack in the head. <laughs> but on others, save with fear. Pulling them out of the fire. Hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to God our Savior who alone is wise be glory and majesty, dominion, power both now and forever and ever and go to 1 John chapter 2. And we'll close here. Oh yes. <laughs> First John chapter two. <laughs> Did you ever, you know, 
I mean, I know people thought, man, what plan are you, what plane are you living from, you know? <laughs> Verse 15. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, he's an idiot. <laughs> If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, hello, that's of this plane of reality, is not of the Father, but is of the world. Does everybody get it? And the world is passing away in the lust of it. It's going to pass away. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Listen, can you do the will of God by living in just this plane of reality? In fact, the will of God is not even in this plane of reality. <laughs> That's why he says those who live according to the world will perish. The will of God is in the plane of reality where he is, not where we are in this realm. That's why we must be connected to that plane of reality and realm of existence. And the world is passing away, the loss of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Little children is the last hour, and you have heard that the Antichrist is coming. Even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For they had gotten caught, bit the bait of lust. For they had been of us, they would have continued with us, but they went out that they might be made manifest, and that none of them were of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, from the plane of reality of God and the realm of existence from God. And you know all things. That's why when you are sealed with the Holy Spirit, you are now sealed with another realm of reality Amen? <laughs> and another realm of existence. Again, you and I are to be connected to the plane of reality and the realm of existence where God is at. Cut loose from this place. Connected. That's what praise and worship is. This. That's what decreeing the word. Remember, you got to sow your way there all the time. You sow your way and you connect. Then there's a release. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We pray tonight, Lord, that each and every one of us would be reconnected to the plane of your reality and the realm of your existence. That we may have victory and dominion in every area of our life in this temporary realm of death and darkness that we may bring light and truth to each and every one that's been taken captive in this realm and connect them to the eternal realm with you. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Stay dressed with the glory.